was there anything you did for good luck or any good luck charm you brought with you? No, no. The only thing that we did uh, on the forge, um, Thanksgiving and Christmas, our ship stores, uh, that's what they claim they did now. I don't know how they did it, but that's what they claim they did. Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, when we were in, in, in Philadelphia, they go to Norfolk and they get between 80 to 100 children. Uh -huh. They'd have a sailor for each kid. They'd bring them aboard ship and give them a Thanksgiving dinner and nuts and stuff to go with it. And then at Christmas time, uh, they do the same thing. And then uh, they had a side elevator over that side of the ship. They had another elevator right in the middle of the ship and the hangar deck. And they get all the kids, they feed all the kids, take them down and give them all the meals. Each one of the kids had their meals. We had one kid or two kids didn't come. They were sick. But the officer of Santa Claus got in the Jeep, oh. took the food, took their presents. Each one of the kids got a present to the orphanage. And uh, we had, I think it was 88 or 89 kids on. And they all had seats on the chairs on the hangar deck. Santa Claus would come down, give the kids all the presents. Us guys sitting in the back row crying like a bunch of babies. <laughs> Oh. We wanted to go home. We couldn't go home. Oh, I went home yeah. for New Year's. We couldn't go home. Oh, oh God. It was something. And uh, the best thing of it was, was uh, yeah, it was Christmas. I didn't go out too much on watch on Liberty and uh, in Philly. And this kid said to me, uh, hey, he says, uh, you stand by four day watch tonight and tomorrow morning for me? I uh, sure I says I ain't going over it. It was a what they call a coal line watch, just one guy in the engine room. Okay. So I go down and stand watching. I guess up in the morning at <coughs> three thirty, goes down in the the engine room. I don't know, about six thirty or so the guys come out seven o'clock and they all got cups. And I thought they were drinking tea or coffee. Uh -oh. I says, You want a drink? I said, Damn coffee. Yeah, but I had to drink this. Here. Oh, I said, the guy, why in the hell did you get the beer? I'll tell you a story, he said. I the officers watch up here, and this man watched down here. Two gangways. Yeah. The officers went off here, and this man went down here. Well, I fixed up with two guys. They went between the officers. Had a fist fight. Oh, to distract them. I come aboard with a taxi. Two cakes of beer. Oh, oh, oh. They roll them on the ship. Way down the bottom of the ship was one of them. I don't know who got the other one. The engineers got one of them. It was Christmas. Boy, we got right into it. We got right into that beer. Oh, man. We finished it. And Probably I, tasted good if you haven't oh, done it for God, a while. Oh, God. We got right into it. Oh, we sucked that beer right up. <laughs> and, uh, of course, when the kids came, of course, we were, all of us were half drunk. And uh, so that night, said, so we can't get rid of these cakes. We can't even on board ship. No. So he goes up and we got in between the officers. One of the officers saw us. He saw a bunch of guys go. Well, one of the kids got it and he got outside the, the catwalk, between the cat building, the inside of the, of the, the hangar deck and the catwalk was a, was a, a walking wall. Yeah. He got out there, took a damn cake in the, in the ocean, he run like hell. We got away. Hope we never got caught. You never got they, caught. They, they, they wouldn't hung me because I had nothing to do with it. But I was there trying to get help them, trying to get rid of the damn cake. <laughs> this we got rid of. Then I had another kid uh, in the engine room. Uh, I don't know how he 
The only way I know if he he could have done it was he had to came back aboard in a, in a taxi cab to the ship. He brought a pint of a quart of whiskey. Come on. I said to him, how the hell did you ever get through the main gate with that quart of whiskey? I said, you didn't get through there with them Marines, because I said, them Marines go <laughs> right over your whole body with a billy club. I mean, no, 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 you didn't do that. I said, I ain't stupid, but I said, we came in on a cab. Of course, we came aboard the ship. He, uh, I don't know if he had a dig of a double bag with him or what, but he had the clothing and stuff in. Of course, the officer watched the party, just opened up the top and said, okay, go ahead. Oh. She had a quart of whiskey, we drank that. <laughs> but the best one was we were in Cuba. Yeah, Cuba, Panama. And I, uh, I got in some kind of whiskey. Got back aboard ship, went to quarters in the morning, went down the engine room. Oh, terrible thirsty. The more water I drank, the drunker I got. <laughs> I can never forget Will George Gilbert. <laughs> he knew. Came back, Kelly. He says, I don't know where you're getting it. He says, you're getting drunker by the minute. Drunk? Where in the hell am I getting any booze on this ship? You ain't going to get aboard this ship with no booze. He says, I know what you're doing, but he says, you're getting drunker by the minute. <laughs> then he chucked me off with water. You wouldn't let me drink no more water. Keep the more drink. water I drank, the drunker I got. <laughs> Something about that whiskey. Oh, God, I never drank any more of that. I thought they were going to court martial me, right, hang me right by the iron. Throw me right over the side. The more water I drank, the drunker I got. Oh, dear mercy. <laughs> but some of that stuff down there, you had to be careful about. Yeah, it was There's one thing I wish I would have done. and um, uh, We couldn't go into Cuba. Because uh, eighty-five percent of the uh, people had veronal diseases, okay, and we went to Guantanamo Bay, the Navy base. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was it, it was uh, it was good, and they had beer there. They called it hot tui. It was a sixteen-ounce bottle. Wow! You could buy eight bottles for a dollar, <laughs> but the temperatures up between one hundred and ten and one hundred and twenty, between one hundred and one hundred and twenty degrees. The heat, the temperature. If you could sit down and drink eight bottles, get up and walk away, you were king of the roost. And it had a one eye ending on it. On the label. Okay. That one eye ending started winking at you. <laughs> you better lay down. <laughs> Time to stop. That one eye ending. You're getting drunk. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We had a, they had a party over there. We went over there on a, on a work detail. We had an officer. And, uh, the chaplain had to come over. I don't know how he got over there, but he got over there somehow. And we got into the beer. And he caught us. I don't know, it was 15, 20, or something, we did. Yeah, we got going back aboard the ship. <laughs> the officer was with us. He was drunk. He, he was drunk. He didn't know how many guys he had with him. <laughs> I can see the officer to watch now. How many guys you got with you? I don't know. <laughs> We went back over the next day, me and another kid. We had to work that day. Next day we went over to they had the party. And uh, we got into it. And they had, uh, well, houses up on stilts. Probably about that high off the ground. We got drunk and here the two of us on all fours. Yes. Crawling, crawling. One, crawl, crawling one and another one of them houses went to sleep. <laughs> Oh, that hot toy, oh, that was something else. But um, all their ice cream and milkshakes made out of goat's milk. Ooh. You got a milkshake down there, which was probably 10 cents or 15 cents or a quarter. You had to almost eat it with a spoon. Wow. It was so thick. Wow. But it was all goat's milk. Ice cream was all, all, it was all goat's milk. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was. That was that was a good base down there. And of course now, I guess now they. I still think they do. I still think they still have prisoners down there. But uh, when we were down there, there was, but they were, they were tough down there. But you know, they were tough. We were anchored out, and we just had to go in on, uh, on Liberty launches and uh, uh, went on the 
dock one day, we for the river launch to come back in. This kid was going to jump in and range grab him. And uh, somehow, whatever, I don't know what I did, I bent over and my case from my locker and everything fell out of my pocket. Ugh. And he says, you ain't jumping in there for sharks. Oh, jeez. My ID was on my, uh, 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 yeah. Dog ties were on it. Oh. Well, I guess I'm going to have to lose my. Best we're thinking when I get back aboard ship, I says, I got to have my dog tags. I ain't worried about the keys. I get boat cutters. I says, I can cut the locks off and my locker and stuff. And so I got back aboard ship and I went up to the man and my command officer. And I said, Sir, I, says, I lost my keys to the ocean. I lost my dog tags. And uh, I said, I'd like to get permission to get a pair of boat cutters to cut my locks from my, when I get in my locker. And, uh, oh, I says, You're right. Well, when I got my dog tags, they had me two different blood types on them. Oh. One was A and one was B. Oh my gosh. So I never did anything. So when I got my new ones, it was just A. Is that what your blood type is? Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Type A, yeah, type A, type A, yeah. Um, so when they, whoever printed them, must have pushed the wrong button on one of them. I said, oh, no, what are you talking about? I can't have two different type of blood. What kind of a thick guy do you think I am? But yeah, I had no trouble though, but yeah, you didn't jump in that water. You go aboard a ship and the ocean was full of sharks. When we left there to go to Panama, they followed us for miles and miles and miles of sharks there. Oh. Or if you'd ever fall in that water, no. you'd have one chance to, one chance of one ever come out of that water alive. Them sharks would have chewed you up so quick you wouldn't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Six, eight footers. Oh, yeah. The same thing happened now when we went fishing up in um, uh, Newburyport, Mass. Um, we had towards uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and Maine. They have what they call uh, bluefin sharks, mm -hmm. uh, 12, 14 footers. Yeah, we got into them. We got into them up there. I got into one uh, 300 feet down. Got me. Turned me right around. If I hadn't been for the for the old mate on there, I my I I went up in the ocean. Right, I had to throw my pole in because he had me. He he was taking me right around the boat, oh. 300 feet down, and my line broke. And I saw I lost my line was just my hooks. I had 60 pound test line on. Gosh, I don't know how I held. And they had a couple of them brought up. I had one guy went with me. He brought one up 35 feet. He lost his line broke. And we had another guy out there. He brought his right up to the top. And they cut the line. And I didn't go up. I didn't go up on the forecastle. I was I stayed back on the stern. I was tired. And uh he uh all of a sudden I heard a gunshot go off. Oh. Oh boy, I said, I ain't going up there. I was shooting one more. Then the mate come back and told me that they shot at it to scare away from the ship. Yeah. Yeah, 12 to 14 footers. Whew. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy, there was something else. God, God man, is. get a hold of you, drag you right around the ship. Give you a ride for your money. <laughs> but no, Cuba was good. Cuba was, uh, 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 Guantanamo Bay wasn't bad. Uh, everything was, oh, that time, everything was cheap. Now, of course, we didn't make much money a month. Anyway, we made what I was making. Well, that time, sea pay, I was making, what, 100 I think it was $108 a month I was making. C pay. Uh, base pay was ninety six dollars. Hmm. So you wouldn't make it worth rich now today is <laughs> the thousands of dollars. A lot of thousands of dollars today you get in there. You go in. Yeah, well, I went it was uh when my brother went in it was he went in nineteen thirty nine. I don't remember, it was twenty some dollars a month or fifty dollars a month. It wasn't much. Oh. I remember it wasn't very much when he went in. But uh, yeah, we started out with 75 and then went up to 86 or 87, then we went up to 90, 97 or 98. Then CPAY was, if it was uh, first class fireman or seaman first class, it was $108 a month, which wasn't much. But. 
Well, they gave, they fed you and everything. Oh, so. they fed you anyways. You, 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 they gave you allowance for clothing every yeah so often, but it wasn't that much. They still should have paid you more. But um, how did people entertain themselves? How did you entertain? How did anybody entertain themselves? Did you ever go to any shows or? Oh yeah, we had movies on board. Oh yeah, we had movies on board. Oh yeah, we had movies on board. If you didn't have liberty, you could stay aboard ship and go to movies. Oh yeah, okay. if you was on watch, you had to watch now. And a lot of places, uh, if you were at a base, Navy base, they let if you were on duty, uh, they let you off the ship to go over on the base. So you can come back in time up to uh, go on your watch. Oh, oh yeah, I've done that. I've done. I've got done a couple of times. We were on duty, and uh, I go over to the on the base and get uh, food and stuff for the guys. Okay. Something to eat for the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you okay. couldn't bring no alcohol aboard ship. No alcohol. No, was yeah, alcohol. Totally. No, no, no. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do that. No. It's just not enough. Oh no, <laughs> you was you brought alcohol aboard ship. You were lucky. <laughs> 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 you didn't need it. You didn't need it. Yeah. Did you ever go to one of USO shows? I went to one in California, and I was very, very, totally disappointed. Oh, okay. Very, very disappointed with it. The, the people there, um, to my opinion, almost didn't like you. Really? Yeah. Now, we was in Panama. We went over to Panama City, a couple of us, and we were walking down the street. If the Americans were walking down the same side of the street that you were, they'd walk across the road and walk down the other side of the street. They didn't know it had nothing to do with American service now. I don't know what happened. I, they oh might have had a good gosh. reason. Something must have happened. But uh, no, nah, they were very uh, against American uh, against American servicemen down there. Yeah, it was. It was. No, I never had no part of part of that. California, well, I, I couldn't drink in California. I used to go over to good old Tea Town, Tijuana. I wouldn't go over there now if you paid me all the money in China. Because <laughs> I might not come back alive. But I, when I went over there, it was... It was calm. I mean, I couldn't drink in California, so I had to go to Mexico yeah. to drink. And no, I never, I never got no trouble over there. I never had no problems over there. With the, they had some awful big cops over there, but no, I <laughs> never had no problems over there in, in T Town. But today, you would give me one hundred miles of place. Not the little, them dope addicts. No, you wouldn't oh, do that. Oh man, any of them Mexican towns and then close to any of them uh, uh, wherever you are, cities, it's it's, it's bad. It's bad. Did you ever go on leave? Uh, I, well, the only time I went on leave is when I came home. I came home on leave. Yeah. You came home I, on I came leave. Home okay. on leave. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, do you recall any particular humorous, unusual events? Like pranks or anything that you'd pull? Mm, no. 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 Just had to keep your sense of humor. Yeah. What, do you, what did you think of the officers and your fellow servicemen? I thought... 99% of them are good. Okay. There's always a certain percentage of them that you're going to have troubles with. Yeah. You're going to have problems with. But no, I, I got along I got along 99% with all the officers, you especially did. petty officers. Petty officers, I never had much trouble with the petty officers. Good. No. Uh, chiefs, I never had no much trouble with the chiefs. It was just mostly the officers, the, the lieutenants, and, and uh, they had problems with the second officer we had was an ensign out of Boston, and uh, he was he was a card of the crew. That guy was. He, if I had listened to him, I could have probably came out as an officer. Yeah. Petty officer. Yeah, he wanted me to walk for a ranch, but uh, I had a brain injury in '37. I hit the car in '37, and uh, my IQ was not too good. Oh. Well, I don't know. I think you're pretty smart. A, you're clever. <laughs> greyhound dog. Oh, I don't see Greyhound. The Raider cap on a 30 set, 33 points right back to the head. Whew. Half an hour to live. I lived them all. I've had two more concussions since. Oh, I've had geez. two more concussions since. So my IQ is not too good. Yeah, your not memory's sharp, though. I'll tell my you. My IQ is not too good. You're one of the sharpest people I've Reading. <laughs> It's better now, but spelling is terrible. Absolutely. Spelling's terrible. awful for everyone. Terrible. The English right. language is terrible. Well, no, when I used to teach the only spelling, way that oh. I, the only way that I got so I could read a little bit was we had two sister school teachers that 
Center School where uh, Meadowbrook is now. Um, Kate Relahan and Anna Relahan. Kate, she slapped the head right off here. No. Anna was the nicest old woman you ever wanted to see. Ever wanted to see. Very, <laughs> very quick. I used to stay in recesses and no one could teach me how to read. Oh. Then my IQ would go down. It took me to get 10 years to get out of both out of eighth grade. It took me 10 years to get out of town. Then I went to Gilbert and I was in Gilbert. The first year I was in Gilbert, I got concussion of brain, so I missed uh, a couple months of Gilbert. And I was, uh, I only passed, I think, one, I only passed one, I think, one thing. And I had to start over again almost as a freshman for a second year. And I said, well, Turned 17. Yeah. Turn me if I get see if I can get into the name. So I did. Had well, the, you like this so good, you served. As something. I said to the Reverend, I had to kind of stretch it a little bit. <laughs> Eric, you did oh, well I, though. Oh how I pick on that poor guy. You oh did. how I give it to him. <laughs> I said, did. Now Eric, you know, when I die, I says you gotta kinda of have that stretch that little bit, Eric, you know. <laughs> you gotta kinda of have the stretch that little bit. But father, um, was reared in the last priest they had down here? Not reared in the priest, the priest before they had him. Oh. I think it was reared in. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't know anyone before he was. That. He didn't care what you were. He didn't care if you were Catholic, Protestant, Jewish. He, gave, he was our chaplain at the uh, at, uh, fire department. Oh, okay. He was a fireman. And, uh, matter of fact, he married my sister in, in, uh, in Farmington. Oh. You remember my sister in Farmington? He buried my sister in Farmington. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He didn't care. He, oh, he, he had, poor guy. He had a terrible life. He was a sick man. Oh. Terrible sick man. Oh, he was something else. He was, he was a nice old gentleman I ever knew. He was, I mean, he was something. He was, he didn't care what you were. It's good when you get people like that. Yeah, he didn't care what you were. Did you keep a journal when you were in the Navy? No, no, no. I didn't. Okay. No. The only journal I kept was up, I could figure out what was going on up here. <laughs> what you did. <laughs> Where were you when you your service ended? Uh, San Francisco, California. Do you remember that day and your discharge? Yeah, I was in, I'm trying to think now. It was at Hunters Point, Gold Island. We did at Hunters Point or Gold Island, we got discharged. And then we uh, got our, all our papers. And then we got our... Uh, yeah, they gave us our, uh, I don't think we went to the train station got our papers to come home, but they, they gave them to us. We got discharged uh, to come home on the train. Come came home, home the train. on the old, the old steam end, the old locomotives, the old, we came up over the mountains in Colorado. Wow, that's quite And true. we stopped for water, filled the old girl up with water, and I, uh, Got out and I says to the conductor, how cold is it? Eight below zero. Whoa. Wham! <laughs> Tony Canavo was with me. Well, it was, I don't know how many ever saw us. There was a few of us on the train. He got pneumonia on me. And I had these, well, he's still buying them now. These little bottles of whiskey like that. Yeah. I think they were a dollar a bottle. For 50 cents, I said to the conductor, I want six, five or six bottles. You're going to get drunk. <laughs> no, sir, I'm not going to get dunk. I said, I got a service man. My buddy here's got the moon at that. I think he's going to die on me. So we did. We get a couple of men to him, covering him up with the peacocks. Keep yeah. him warm. Yeah, he finally came out. I thought he was going to, I thought I was going to take him out to the, the, uh -huh. the train. I thought, he was going to, I thought he was going to put him back in the neighborhood. I, thought he was going to, I didn't think he was going to make it. Oh, he was a sick kid. Tony was, oh, man, he was sick. You know how to take care oh, of Oh, it was cold. Oh, man, it was coming across the country. Of course, it was worse for me because I was in the fire room all the time. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it was standing damn cold. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Well, then we picked up a bunch of boots camps. The guys just got out of boot camp in the Great Lakes, and they had a girl on there. It was I think she had a baby with her, and all the guys were after her. And they were going out, leaving the doors open, the windows open. We beat the Jesus out of oh. two or three of them. And I had an officer there sitting there in the chair, and I was waiting for him to say something to me because I was discharged. I had to flatten him. I, would, I still had my uniform on, but I would have flattened him. Yeah, damn fools. Yeah, they busted out a bunch of windows, and oh, Jesus, they, I guess they, uh, I think they finally stopped at another station. I think the cops came on board and took some of them off the shit off the, off the, oh, it was cold. Jesus Christ, it was cold. Plus, the old cars, the old, 
trains like that, you know. They, they didn't have They did. Everything rattled and shook and quivered. And we went around the haystack here. We went around in circles, we went around the haystack three times on a different track. Really? We kept going, but we was on the same track, but we kept going around circles on that haystack. Go up over, I think we go, go up over four one miles. We were, we were on level ground, but I remember we were going, we kept oh, going okay. around circles. We kept going around circles. Yeah, Colorado. Up we stopped. We stopped in one town. I said to the guys, now, if I'm Steve, I said, wake me up. Next thing I know, but you're going to do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. How come you guys didn't wake me up? Wake you up! We did everything but stand you on the head. We're going to wake you up. <laughs> well, we stopped in one town, and the liquor was racing. And one of the guys, somebody gave the guy a stamp to get liquor, racing ticket to get liquor. The guy's laid down and almost cried. They had the bottle of whiskey in the bag and it slipped out. His head. The bottle slipped to oh. the bag. Crash. Oh. Oh. <laughs> God, that guy almost got down. He got down as easy, he almost cried. Oh. oh, God. He was a licking up. Oh. <laughs> bottle of whiskey all gone. Oh, Jesus. He said. But yeah, we, I forgot what, 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 what state we were in, but it was the uh, liquor was racing. And the guy gave this sailor a oh. uh, thing to get liquor. And he went, slipped through the bag. Pow! <laughs> Busted that bottle all. But yeah, it was a. We, we uh, took us four and a half days to come home from uh, California on the train. What was your homecoming like? Well, I came home. Of course, where I lived. My brother had sold the house. <laughs> I, had no idea. I had no idea where I was going. <laughs> and uh, I went down to my brother's house, uh, down just for the sewer beds, just where you get the sewer beds. He's up on the hill, he lived up on the hill there. And uh, my brother Johnny was here. I don't know what he was up here for, but he, he didn't have his wife with him. He was married. And uh, I went back to Norfolk, Virginia with him. We drove back to Norfolk, Virginia in a snowstorm. And uh, then I went to work at, at the Navy base. Oh, you at, did? At um, uh, transporting, moving, uh, dragging airplanes around with tractors for repairs. Okay. Yeah. Then I left that and I went to Chicago for uh, with another kid for auto mechanic and that didn't work out. I got out of that and I stayed there for a while and I worked there for uh, uh, a warehouse, Chase Dodson Copper. And, uh, uh, the worst part of Chicago you would ever want to be in the south end of Chicago. Oh. I worked from two in the afternoon to ten at night. I had Newton brothers, big guys. Oh, they were big boys, 250, 260 pounds. Stronger than me with both of them. And uh, we had this one old colored guy there. Oh, he was a, oh God, he was a wonderful old chum. He was kind of a religious kind of a guy. We worked from two in the afternoon to 10 at night. I was working there one day and I said to him, I said, you know, I says, I used to go out at nighttime, we used to take a shortcut through the alleyways to get up to the subway. And as I come out, well, at one place, right directly in front of me was uh, Bond Bread, where they made Bond Bread. Yeah. Come out one night and, uh, yeah. Frank's auto uh, truck was there for to pick up the, pay, the, the money. Yeah. I heard the guy get out of the truck and I heard him pull back the hammer. Uh. I heard click. Oh, boy. I said, oh, don't you shoot me. I just kept right on walking. I never looked, I just had one eye on him, one eye where he was going. I just kept right on walking. I, but I said, this color guy, I says, one of these guys, I says, they're going, bless you a pay night. I said, somebody's going to nail me. Nobody ever bothered me. Whew. Saturday nights, Friday nights and Saturday nights, stabbing, shot, people getting shot. Oh my God, what a country that was down there.
Yeah, I worked on it for quite a while, and I had a kid from Bridgeport. He was there whenever I was living, and uh, he was going to come home. I says, okay, I says, we'll come home together. And I came home, and I came, I think I came as far as Waterbury. I think I hitchhiked home from Waterbury. I don't remember. I could have came to Winston that long time ago. Yeah. That was in 48. So you didn't use the GI Bill at all? Uh, yeah, when I was going to school in Chicago, okay, I, I used the GI Bill for a while, but it didn't work out. It didn't work out. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I didn't have the, I didn't have the morale to do it. I, I just dropped out. I wanted okay. a kid. I had a kid from. Um, hmm. North of Virginia, he was in Newport News. Is Newport News next town up in Virginia? We just had to go over. To get over there, you had to go across in a ferry. You had to go across the water in a ferry to get over to the town. Yeah, he lived there. He was going to automatic. He was going to be a um, mechanic. It was mechanic school for, for cars. Okay. Yeah. I guess he must have made it. I never, I never know how that ever did make out. Did you I have did. any close friendships in the service? Uh, yeah, I had. A, I mean, the uh, fellows or yeah, the fellows. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I had. I had this one, this McGee I was saying about from West Virginia. Uh, him and I were very close friends. Yeah, we were very close. Yeah, I had some pretty good close friends in there. Yeah, and this other kid there on the on the uh, Tuawa. Uh, trying to think of his name. I got Shepherd on the brain, but I don't think it was Shepherd. Him and I were very close. We were, oh, we were, we were very close together. Oh yeah, we used to sit down at nighttime and smoke, smoke his uh, London Dock tobacco. <laughs> London Dock tobacco. Tobacco. Yeah, I couldn't smoke too much of it because it had, uh, I think it had rum or something in it. Ooh. Make it a little wacky in the head. <laughs> but yeah, every night, him and I used to, have, used to stand and watch together. Him and I used to stand and watch together. Okay. He's the one. He's the one that actually trained me to be a fireman. To be a fireman and. Room, yeah, yeah. Mm. He was a good kid. He was a good kid. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I would like to stay with him. Even Gilbert and Shepard, I had on the other ship. We had another guy on there, Long. Um, he was a first class petty officer. He got busted down the, when I left the ship. He was busted down the fireman. He was something else. That guy. Oh man, he was a character. <laughs> you ever want to see a character boy? He was. Oh boy. Did you ever keep in touch with him? Continue. No, 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 no. And then after you get out of the service um, and you came back from Chicago, um, you became a firefighter? Uh, 1950. 1950? 1950, I became a firefighter. Yeah, I, was, I started to work for the town uh, in 1949. Um, I worked at the cemetery at, at, in um, cemetery. Yeah, shoot. Center Cemetery one summer. I worked up there one summer. Okay. And um, then I used to go around different places, um, doing wonders and stuff, doing a little bit of yard work. And my brother worked for the town, and uh, they had sold a truck, traded the truck in for a new one. What was it? What was this one I drove? I think it was a 41 or 42. 41, I think it was. They traded it in for a 47 or 48. And... Uh, 48, I guess. And they were going to buy it back. And my brother come home and asked me if I wanted to go to work for the town as a truck driver. I didn't even have a driver's license. Never had a time to take I had, I had to go to Canton. I had to go to Canton. I knew how to drive. I had to go to Canton and get my driver's license. <laughs> got my driver's license and, and uh, I think it was not October. We had to put the new, Bobby Ash and I had, we had to put the new plow frame and everything on it. I had to get everything all hooked up on the truck mm -hmm. for the winter. I never plow a in my life. But I learned, I did have, I did all of South Norfolk. It used to take me four or five hours, about four hours to do South Norfolk. I used to do the whole South Norfolk. There's a lot of roads down there. But the, 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 the trouble was you couldn't go fast with it right. because the distributor cap was right in the back of the fan. It was a V8. Uh. And that distributor cap would get wet. That's why my hands are no good today. Uh, my fingers have been froze too many times. Oh, really? No good at all. 
you get down to 40 degrees, I got to put gloves on. Then if it gets down below uh, 28 and 30, or 28 degrees and below that, I got to put mittens on. Then if it gets colder than that, I got to put the hand warmers on. Oh. They're no good for nothing. They didn't have the hand warmers back then. No, no, no. <laughs> well, they weren't no good anyway them days. Of course, you drive a truck, you got a hand warmer. And the damn truck I had, the 41 I drove, the heater in it, he must have had nothing. There was no oh. heater in it at all. So I wore it wouldn't work nothing. Oh, God. So you've always got, worked for the town? Yeah, I worked for the town for 33 years. Okay. Um, and I was, what would you say, dismissed from the town. Oh, okay. You tired? No. Oh. Fired me. Back in. Couldn't drive a truck no more. Three of us got it. I got it. Lawrence Swiftford got it. Jimmy Collins got it. I fed him grease. Couldn't drive a truck no more. I had three more years ago. To give you this. I could have retired. I lost half my pension. But I did do one thing though. I love these guys. My brother, he, he should have had us kicked in the butt. Retired from the state. That time, a good pension. Mm -hmm. Never left his wife a nickel out of his pension. Now, out of my pension, they take out ninety dollars a month. Yeah. My wife, after I die, my wife would draw. For, if I die first, my wife would draw for ten years. Yeah. Half of these guys don't do that. They don't think about their wives. Today, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if you're going to die first or she's going right. You don't know what the hell's going to happen. You're right. I said, no, no, no. I said, I ain't going to do that. I this said, I ain't going like to draw much pension anyway. I said, what little bit to take on my pay every month? Forget about it. Hmm? You got to take care of the boss. <laughs> Good for you. You know, <laughs> take care of the that's the priority. Oh, I had a lot of them. Seth Brown that lived over there where you lived, across the road where you lived. Yep. Yeah. I remember he Seth. He really retired from state. He never left his wife anything. Sid Toomey did the same thing. When he retired from state police, he never left his wife anything. Oh. You don't do that. Jesus no. Christ. They're the ones that keep you going. God almighty, you got to <laughs> take care of your better half. God damn. Now, have you always managed the Coon Club, or is that mostly your daughter that does that? Oh, no, we do. You do? We do, yeah. Okay. We How do. long have you been here at the Coon Club? Uh, starting the 1st of January, we'll be, we'll be starting our 38th year. Okay. Yeah. My mom stayed here a couple times. She loves staying here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when my brother, when my sister was married and one other time when she yeah. came to visit. She oh, loves we, staying uh, here. Yeah, we've been here 30 years. I try to get the guys to fire me. The more I, the more I holler at them, the, you ain't going nowhere. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. No, it's most time, of the guys. Most of the guys that when I came here are gone. Yeah. Uh, Ninety-eight. Well, Nick Finale's still here. He was the guy that hired me. We got a guy from Winston here, Charlie Nichols. He just retired from the club. He was here. Uh, Fred Fritz. He could retire. Uh, he was here when I came. Um, Ken Anderson, he's up in Vermont. He's got time enough. He could retire. He could uh, retire from the club. Uh, Charlie Fritz is retired from the club. Most all these older gentlemen that are. We're here, except uh, Anderson. Most of them have, they had their 30 years and they're old enough to retire. 30 years and they're 65 years old, they retire. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, 90, 90, 90, I will say 99% of them are, have passed away. Yeah. Passed away, yeah. We got another guy, uh, Bill Taylor. He's still alive. He's up in. Um, Is Stanford up the other side of Windsor Locks? No, Stanford's down. No, Stanford. What's the one the up, up there? It's not, not, uh, not Stanford Springs. Stanford well, anyway, Springs. He's, he's in the next town up above Windsor Locks. He's, okay. He retired from the National Guard. Okay. And uh, he, he was, he's still married, but he's, his wife couldn't take care of him. He's in a convalescent home up there. 
Okay. He's still alive. He's 80. I think he's 82. 82 or 83. Okay. Hmm. Um, how did your military experience influence your thinking about war or the military in general? Well, you know, they talk about this thing we got now over there in Iraq. They should never, never, when they started it, they should have never sent troops over there. But it's like shooting ducks. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's you might cut the population of your country down, but you ain't got to do it that way. No, no, that's, that was bad. That was bad. Now they, I think now they finally got, they, uh, they are going to send over more advisors to try to train them or other guys over there, but don't send the troops over there to fight. No, no, it's nice to take them out here. Let's let me take them out here in the, in the parking lot and shoot them. That's all you're doing is it's like sitting sitting ducks. I mean, it's no good over there. Them guys, that's uh, that's bad. Any of them wars are bad. Your Vietnam War and your Korean War. I think your Vietnam War was the worst. The soldiers came home and the people turned against them. Yes. Korean War was bad, but it wasn't quite that bad. But no, it's no good. It's no good. It's no good. <coughs> now, Lyle Broy, he was in. Uh, he was in the Korean War. He was like a medic, and he had to go out and pick up the wounded and the dead. And he says, "You had to watch what you drank, whiskey you drank, because he says some of that stuff would kill you." He says most of the time he says you, in order to stay sane, you had to stay drunk. You had, yeah. You had to stay drunk. If you didn't, you'd go right out of your mind. But he was he he, he got right into the he got right into the worst stuff. He was picking up the the wounded and the, the dead, you know, that stuff. Some people can't take that. There will be now. That wouldn't bother me too much, but uh, some people can't do that. No. I think the best experience that I ever had here uh, was nineteen yeah, it was nineteen seventy eight. We hadn't moved in here yet. My son Mike stayed here because of the liquor, so I had to be here at night time. And I was on the ambulance crew then. Uh, we get a call, the guy's hurt over here at the club. And I was up on Ball Mountain. I think we're pulling tree limbs or something on. All the roads from the storm. And I come back down, Johnny Berry and I, Pinky Bazzano, I think it was just the three of us. We used to call and I drove the Amazon and I get over here and I said, well, but somebody was skiing. So I goes down the bottom of the hill here where the lower pond is and I looks in there and the road goes in there were ski tracks in there and the snow was deep, oh Christ, the snow was that deep. So I found the ski tracks and the guys found the highway. Hey, come back, come back. Bo John from Canaan. Yeah. Young boy, he was only 24, 25 years old. Mm -hmm. The other side where the dirt road goes up, we call it, it's the green road. On the left hand side, there's, as you just go back, there's a, like a ledge stair, stone ledge stair. And another, there's a guy with him. And he says, he's, he's down here, he's up in the woods. So we went down there, we parked the ambulance. And he took everything we could carry out. Pinky, oh, poor Pinky, she was loaded down. We took oxygen, we took everything we could carry. But the thing that really, really, truly helped us was somebody had been up in there with a snowmobile. Oh, okay. So you had a bit of a trail. So we okay. could walk. Okay. We gets up there, and this guy's up there, this cross country skiing, Bo John. This guy was with him. And I don't know why. Wow, how we did it, but anyway, he, he come down on a stick, and the stick went up to his butt. And he was laying down on the ground on the leg. And we always carried a box, or two boxes of Kotex for this, for Pat. Mm -hmm. So we get out there, and he's leaning on it, and I'm Pack and the stick stuck on probably that far. It's probably about that big around. Oh. 
But what went into it was bigger round. So I guess him all padded up good, and I says, now, I got him. The first thing we did when we got there, before we even touched him, we put him on oxygen, keep him going into shock. Mm -hmm. So I had to move the guy's leg a little bit. Oh, my God. You could have heard him all the way to Harvard Screen. But I Is had that to. Mike Coe? No. Mike Coe? Mike Coe was... Uh, it got hurt. No, no. Bojan. 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 Okay. Bojan from Canaan. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I thought I heard the story. No, no. Bojan from Canaan. He was about 25 years old. He had this other guy with him. He was a member of the Coon Club. Okay. And um, so we got him packed. And Johnny Bozano, Pinky's husband, comes back to Norfolk. And he knew somebody that had a, a snowmobile and a sled. Okay. So he never changed the guy's position. Left in the same position was a state cop come up. And uh, we put the back, we rolled him a little bit, laid him back on the backboard, picked the backboard up, set him on the snowmobile, and Johnny Berry was on that side, and I was on this side. We squatted down, and the state cop had the oxygen tank. Okay. And Johnny lost his shoe, and we had to stop and find his shoe, and the cop got stranded in the snow bank. <laughs> we couldn't walk in the trail because there was too many of us. We were walking on the sides. And... We get him down the ambulance, we get him loaded in the ambulance, and I said, I was driving, I said to myself, bro, I'll get him down to the goddamn hospital. So I fired the ambulance, so I get down, down, not too far down here, before we got, even, before we even got down to uh, Black Hill Road. So down to 20 miles an hour. We turned right around the corner, he rolled. <gasps> he hit that stick. Uh. We get him down to the hospital. What do you think they did down the hospital? Now, these are doctors. Yeah. Us guys, we're nothing but a bunch of dumb ENTs. They no, know what, you knew what the you day of the week it was. Took the oxygen off. And the poor guy starts to heave. And they x rayed him. Here to here. I don't know if it's Dutton, Briggs, or Terry, I don't know anybody, but anyway. They start pulling the stick out. They kept coming. Oh, my Stop God. Stop it. Now, the diaphragm and heart. If we had moved him a quarter of an inch, we'd be killed. Oh, my gosh. And them dumb nuts down there, the first thing they do is take the oxygen take the off a guy, and we're trying to keep him from going into a state of shock. Jesus Christ. I could have... She's upstairs. Oh, she's upstairs? Yeah. <laughs> Holler to her. Teresa. Yeah. Okay, I'm almost done here. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, we, we got him down there, and, and uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Dr. Turry was there. He was, uh, he was the uh, uh, bone doctor. Scissors, scissors, because it was going to cut them pulled right off him. Yeah. And yeah, they uh, he got a little bit of infection in there, nothing serious. Nothing got broke. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I, I think somebody told me that he kept the stick and framed it. And I remember he sent the Lions Club a five hundred dollar donation for saving his life. Jeez! But they were going to. The right thing. They were. Uh, they were going to. Um, excuse me. Write us up and. Uh, uh, medical journal. Yeah. Was already doing it, and something happened. Right, they called it off. They called it off. Yeah, we were already. Pinky was out. Johnny Berry and I, and young Johnny, uh, uh, Pinky's husband Johnny. I don't. I think that's just all that was there. Yeah. And then the, the state cop. I don't remember who the state cop was again, but he came up in there. You know what to do. But uh, no, he didn't do much. No, he he was he was, he just carried the oxygen. And Johnny and I just walked side of the of the stretcher, the the sled, so the bridge, tree branches wouldn't hit him in the face. Yeah. No, I mean, you do. Oh, yeah, we all oh, we know what we were doing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes them state cops can get, sometimes them state cops can get miserable. Oh, you are sure. <laughs> they had one over there years ago. Um, did you join any veteran organizations? Did veteran you join organizations? any veteran organizations? Uh, no, I'll tell you why. I came home. I'm not going to tell, to tell you the gentleman's name. He was the head of the American Legion, and I wanted to join the American Legion. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Mary says you can't. So it made me mad, and I never joined. 
I never joined any organization. I, I just, it just made me mad. I was, I was hot. I was right on fire. I was, I couldn't believe it. I said to myself, there's something, something wrong here somewhere. I says, but he was a commanding officer up here, so there's nothing I could do. So, no, I never joined any organization. No, no. Okay. No. Did you ever go back for any reunions? No, I never, no, no, as far as I know, I don't think our ship ever had any reunions, not that okay. I know of, not that I know of, no, no. Okay. Um, how did your service and experience affect your life? Think well, that's a firefighter that you've become? And well, yes, well, of course, I became a firefighter. I was a fire firefighter for 60 years, and um, you learned a lot. I mean, you learn how to uh, respect your your federal, your, 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 uh, your buddies on the ship and your officers and uh, do what you were told. If it wasn't right, you do it anyway. If it was wrong, well, you worry about it afterwards, worry what happens afterwards. But no, you, it, it, I say today every kid should go into service for, for at least two years to learn how things, how the country's run. I mean, it's, it, it's a great experience. I, as I say, if I was younger again, I'd do, I'd do it all over again. I would do it all over again. I might stay in for 20 years. I had a brother who was in for 12 years, and the only reason why he got out was he was married. He had a daughter, and he was an aviation mechanic, and he had to go back to flying, and he didn't want no more. But he got peppered a few times in Germany. He was on uh, PBMs and PBYs, oh. and uh, he was a mechanic, and he... He didn't want no more. He didn't want to find no more. He got out. He had 12 years, and when he had eight years, more years ago, he, he had enough of it. He got out. Chief Petty Officer. Made Chief Petty Officer, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a great experience. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing to... You go in there, it's like anything else. You got the good guys, and you got the bad guys. Especially boot camp. Boot camp is the worst. <laughs> because you, 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 if you don't like your drill sergeant, your, your drill officer, you're in bad trouble. Yeah. You're in more trouble than you want to get into, but you keep your mouth shut and do what you're told. And oh yeah, I used to, we used to we used to stand watches at midnight and night watches down there in the different barracks. And nobody would be in there, and you'd have to go around and check them out. You had to watch stuff, but you never knew when an officer was going to come and <laughs> tap right. you on the shoulder, and make sure you weren't. And you had to be careful smoking too, because a lot of the barracks you couldn't smoke in. Mm -hmm. but no, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. Anything else you want to add? No, no, I don't think so. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kelly. Hey, I'm thank so you for coming. I'm so happy we finally thank got to talk coming. to you. Thank you for coming. Really. Great stories, and it's it an honor. Great, as I say, it's a great honor. It's a great honor for me, uh, especially Memorial Day, that I, know. I could go to, to the parade and honor my five brothers.